Hi guys, I want to show you a quick video today of how I test and analyze data for any ideas I have. So this is the Birwino here, my project. If you guys are not following me, um, you can go to my website and um, to my blog and kind of find out more about the project. But basically, this was originally a data logger and now it's a data logger and a controller so it can take action on different data um, points. And here I am testing uh, heating in a 2000 milliliter flask using a 50 watt submersible fish eater and according fish eater and uh, today what I was testing for is correct placement of the temperature sensor which is here I have one inside the fluid or, or this thing and one outside here is I want to test um, and record the external temperatures of the environment the testing environment so I quickly found out that it's not a good idea to have a temperature sensor on the bottom on the bottom uh, because that's that's what was my original start in the test because heat as it creates it rises to the top slowly then a lot of it accumulated here and then when I manually mixed this with my hand a lot uh, the the true temperature came out and instead of being 80 Fahrenheit my goal is shot to uh, 105 Fahrenheit so it was over by 25 Fahrenheit simply by moving it from the bottom to above your heating source um, as the heat is created, it goes goes over over it, right? It mixes with it better, at least in this test. I'll do a test on my 12 and a half gallon fermented tomorrow. Um, also, probably a good idea to have multiple sensors placed in different areas, probably different data points in, in the fermenter. But I'm I'm not I'm not doing that right now. Uh, let me show you guys how I bring in the data so basically the data is on the SD card and I transfer it to my laptop but I use a statistical program called R and a front GUI for it called R Studio it just gives it a nicer environment but basically I read in the data I collect statistics on it I, I look at the columns I captured what values I have I quickly verify things and then I also create a plot so this is on the bottom is the um, observations on the x-axis this is x-axis and on the y-axis I line plot both of the temperatures the red line is external so you can kind of see when the my house heater turns on or off on or off on or off and this kind of uh, bluish line is internal temperature so when I first started it was about 64 the heater kicked in right heated it and then I changed again went up no, actually, I didn't change it. This is when I mixed the flask manually with my hand and I discovered the problem. And let me show you guys something else. Uh, you might not realize, but I'm taking every 50th, so uh, every 50th row, I'm taking that uh, row of data out of the big giant data set and I'm plotting it here. I'm not actually plotting the, all the observations. I'm going to change this really quickly to show you guys um, the real data set and inside there there's an outlier a value that uh, will change the scale of this plot and make it hard to read but let me run it right now so here's the outlier so this what this is is i want to see how what happens when i unplug the sensor so just to see how the data is uh, recorded and how we will plot so i just quickly um, plugged it and plugged it back in but you can see the orange line the red line that's my external temperature in this room the when the heater was turned on and off in my room right and here you can see it um, brought it up to my goal and here is when I manually mixed the flask and it overshot 205 and that's this is where I discovered the issue and then I, co I quickly corrected it but again, the reason why it's out of scale and it's hard to read because it's this outlier here. If you don't know what an outlier is, um, you can Google that. It's not that difficult. And uh, let me run that again. Here it is. So I am. Uh, so 
here, if you look at the variables, I have 2,526 observations. So think of the, an observation as a row of data. So one row is one observation. And here, I, I told R to take an observation every 50th row. So 2,526 divided by 50 will get you 51 observations. If you want to see um, uh, more data, you can change this, right? So maybe you want to take it every 25 row. So that would um, be about 100 observations. Here you go. So you can kind of play with it, zoom in and out. Um, but you can you can qu see what happened when I, when I manually mixed. And here's that outlier it sh shot through the roof again. <coughs> Actually, the outlier is not, not in this data. This is the uh, when I mixed it with my hand and went up to 105. And that's it. At this point, I ended the test and uh, I adjusted the temperature sensor. And then I ran it for six or seven hours while mixing it again. And it over it only overshot by one to one and a half degrees, which is great because in a 2000 milliliter flask, if it's overshooting by uh, one degree, that's not a big deal. Even two degrees because I can account for it in my uh, program. And it shouldn't. In a bigger uh, body of water, of uh, volume of wort, whatever, it shouldn't be an issue at all. But I will test out tomorrow. Thank you, guys.